Before we get started, we want to give a shout out to our sponsor, the Magic Satchel. Link in the description. Make sure you check him out for all your cards, supplies, and everything you need to play this game. He's the best. And with that out of the way, enjoy the video. Hey, Absolution fans. Gift twos are finally out in the West. We got some thoughts about it. Stick around. Fans, it's the captain here, along with my boy, the immortal greed. Hello. Um, today we decided to come very short. It's not a bar gate. I'm drinking water. <laughs> <laughs> this is a hydrate. <laughs> this is a mag magalagana. How do you say it? <laughs> magalagana <and a> gate. <laughs> he's got the, he's got the pirate grog part. I got the I got the aqua force part. <laughs> Uh, this is going to be a little, just our thoughts. Um, so, you know, with the release of My Heroic Evolution, um, or The Heroic Evolution? One of the two. The Heroic Evolution. We, uh, we now have Gift 2s. And, uh, we've talked to them, we've talked about them before in, uh, damage check and stuff like that. But, uh, Matt and I especially, and also I know for Braxton for the most part, we don't play CFA, um, or do anything like that. So, like, we weren't... You know, and, and we never really practiced it against each other because there were still some sets in between mm -hmm. that we needed to practice for. And Braxton didn't want to play practice because he was practicing for Nats. For Nats, yeah. And so and Nats didn't have, uh, ARG Nats didn't have um, gift 2s. So we kind of stayed in the past for a little bit longer than everybody else. Because I think everybody kind of like, you know, regardless of where you are, you know, flip your gift sideways, do a little testing, you know, have some fun. But, but now officially... We're in the throws. Gift two. We're playing it. Mm -hmm. We're having some good times. Some um, of us. Some of us are having good times. We're all having some good times. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I just want to have a general discussion on what our thoughts over here on the west, the east of the west, as you said, mm. <laughs> western hemisphere, eastern side of the continent. <laughs> west is best. <laughs> I thought you said west. <laughs> uh, so first things first. Um, when the announcement was made, I think we both thought, like, this could bring back old decks. And now that it's out, it did actually bring it, back... It did exactly what we said it would do. Not, 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 like, to be braggadocious about it, but, like, yeah, it lived exactly up to what we thought would happen. Yeah. Um, especially for all of our friends over at that Yellow Excel building, who were like, <laughs> thank God we're not going under. <laughs> Cards? <laughs> I, I gotta say, like, just, just real quick anecdotal... Have you guys played Great Nature recently? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dude, your homescape doesn't neg you so bad anymore. It feels so good. <laughs> now, uh, did it like I w did it change the meta per se? Maybe not. Uh, I mean, Messiah's out here destroying, but those decks were absurd. Mm. But regardless of gifts, like, and that's going to be totally dependent on where you are, who you're playing, and so on and so forth. Yeah, I guess we have the benefit of a much more variety in our locals community and stuff like that. So not everyone's playing the the top mm -hmm. tier deck. Not everyone's, but not, also not everyone's playing the low tier decks. There's a lot of people who are like, I want to play this this time. And now, especially with Gift Two, everyone wants to jump back in. Mm -hmm. Except for maybe Tati's. I don't think anyone's in a rush. Well, we haven't seen John in a while, so <laughs> John, you hear this? Come back. We miss you. Bring Paul. <laughs> they were the ones leading the Excel 2 building. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, but Excel 2, Force 2, um, Protect 2, I guess if you haven't, uh, if you're watching this, I'm assuming you know, but really quick. Uh, Force 2 is uh, a crit instead of 10k power mm -hmm. on a circle. does not stack. Uh, thank God. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, Protect 2 is... 10k to a shield and 5k to power. And that goes on the circle as well, like a force marker. And it does stack. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Excel 2 is basically Excel 1, except it's 5k power instead of 10k power, and you draw a card when placed. Mm. Not when a unit's placed, but when, Ooh. when it's... Ha! Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine just filtering out your deck, just like playing from hand? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, no! Uh, you draw a card on the force place, or on the Excel place rather. Hence why I mentioned uh, Homsky feeling pretty good, finally getting to use his skill, doing the superior call, and then drawing two cards. Mm. That's nice, man. And you, and you always end up kind of curving right back into Leopold and doing your thing. 
Yeah, you've been playing a lot of, of, uh, of Force, I mean, of, of Excel 2 uh, Great Nature the other day, practicing with Braxton. Pretty much exclusively. I haven't actually played, um, I haven't played Force 2, because everybody I've played against has played Force 2. I get the idea. <laughs> it's not a lot to think about. It's a crit and you die. I played Spikes on Force 2 and I have played... I have played Spikes on Force 2. Actually. I played Spikes on Force 2 and uh, um, Royals on Force 2. And man, one... Spikes got a huge upgrade in the Force 2 sphere. Because one, I think that they got enough power as is. Mm -hmm. And the crit just puts a level of aggression on that deck that it was never designed to do this is also just a great excuse for us to harp about how good we think spikes still are regardless <laughs> of everything that's happened deck's fantastic deck's, deck's so good yeah best investment thanks dean <laughs> best investment we ever made seriously oh um, such a good scoop and even uh, a, a friend of ours at locals uh he came up with mega colony playing protect 2 kind of caught me and braxton both off guard beat me and beat braxton i know like, it, it's, uh, you wouldn't expect bugs to come back doing anything, but once you give them that little power line boost and you're like, oh, that is, um, that is in fact 15k intercept now, uh, it's, it's the little tweaks like that that you might not think make a whole heck of a lot of difference, but it's kind of a game changer. What, what makes it really interesting is that you get to see that, like, uh, there were a lot of people that wonder, like, oh, they must have always been thinking ahead, like, no, I don't think so at all. I think that, like, I think these old decks becoming so good are, are proof that, like, these old decks were built for their original gifts and never designed for any new type of gift. Yeah. And so a lot of them, like, for example, I don't think they would have given, uh, they would have given Hemsuke a superior, uh, the superior call in Excel marker mm -hmm. if you drew a card off of it as well. Yeah, I, I think, um, I think every single gift too. Is strictly reactive, not proactive, on their on their design. Yeah. <laughs> now, Grant, I think that uh, I think so. Let's let's rank them real quick. What do you think in order of m most beneficial to least beneficial? Uh, for me, uh, it has to be Excel because regardless of what might be topping right now and what might be the best deck right now, um, Force One, Force Two, Excel Two, Excel One, so on and so forth. I think that the biggest step forward was made in making any Excel deck that much more viable. To be able to play Novas, to see that Novas are doing really well now. Um, you know, granted, they did get a lot of cool support, but um, I think Excel 2 is doing a lot of legwork in, in kind of pushing them forward, giving them the gas they need uh, to, to even contend, stay in the game, you know? Um, it's just, I think it's doing the most work. Because if you look at something like Force 2, uh, it does kind of feel like some lateral movement, like... Uh, obviously, it's going to be matchup dependent on what you pick, and you should definitely always look at who you're playing before you pick your gift. That should be going without being said. Um, but yeah, for me, it's Excel 2 in the top spot. I'm definitely going to agree with the top spot going to Excel 2. Similar for, yeah, most improved. Mm -hmm. Is it like... Um, and and, and uh, I just think that it's... I find a hard time saying... I, I could definitely see it happening, but like it's a lot harder to say... I need to use Excel 1 here. Like, I would have to see the matchup explained to me that, like, I need Excel 1 in this situation. I was like, is, is the extra 5K really worth the card? Is it really? Because I'd rather have the card in almost all. Because, like, in pretty much every in, in, in any situation, unless, like, all your grade 1s are 7K. Yeah. And, like, the 5K does you nothing. Um, and you need the 10K just to hit even on an Excel line. Uh, Excel, Excel circle. So, in, in my opinion, I think that um, Excel 2, because I think in most cases it's just better than Excel 1. I was trying to think, like, uh, maybe maybe you could use Excel 1 again um, in a matchup where you already had the speed advantage. You know, you're playing against something like Protect. But even then, you, how do you justify that when you can say, if I just draw more cor more cards, I just win quicker anyway? Yeah, the, another, another way to think about it, too, is I, I'm recently thinking about the way, like, math, the, not the math, but, like, logistically, um, that back in the old days of Vanguard, we talked about magic numbers, remember, 13, uh, or, uh, yeah, 11, 11 was the first, right, and then we had, like, 16, 16, 21, 21, and then with cross rides, it was, uh, you know, similar forces, 13, you know, like 18, 13, 18, 23, 23, so... In this state of the game, right, attacking for 5k guard and attacking for 10k guard against an opponent 
is virtually same just because a deck only contains roughly in most decks eight eight at the lowest and like 12 at the highest 5k shields mm -hmm. because um maybe a little bit more if they run actual vanilla draw triggers but only great twos are 5ks right everything else is is 10k or above so attacking for 13 and attacking for 18 against the force line or attacking 12 and attacking 17 more than likely they're going to have to drop a 10k either way right Be just because given what they're going to have in their hand or trigger if you get or, the most the most spice out of your belt, <laughs> your little your little dinky swing there. Yeah, so <laughs> you're not really losing that much from just hitting the thirteen, in my opinion. Mm. Um, now I do think that hitting the thirteen is crucial. Yeah, but that just comes up to having, having the right cards at the right time. Yeah. So yeah, that's why I think you sell two. And then next, I gotta go force two. As as much as I just said, it is lateral movement. Force was still really good, and it's really good lateral movement. Um, because, like we were saying, you put it on a, on a, on a clan like Spike Brothers, and you're looking at a 33 base crit 2 juggernaut maximum for no reason, after you see free it, of course. Uh, and then, after all the testing that I have done, playing against Braxton, beating me over the head with the great Dote, I just... Maybe, maybe it's because I'm not playing Protect, maybe it's because I was trying really hard to make my decks work the way I wanted them to work, but... When you restand the Neo Flame with the crit on it, when you restand your Vanguard pretty much every turn, like it, it takes such a toll. Like triple swing Dote is absurd. Obviously, you know news to who, but <laughs> with, with Force Two, it's so much more oppressive to not be able to take those extra swings you need. You know, throw it on the Vanguard, and it's like, okay, well, I can't take that first swing anymore, hoping for the trigger, the trigger because I'll just get blown out. Uh, it it's hard. It's really, really good. No, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's just. It, it, I agree that it is the most lateral movement, mm -hmm. or it is a it is a big step sideways. But it, it it benefits one because over the duration of a game, a deck that can only see roughly like a deck that can, that'll only see one, two force markers a game, mm -hmm. it's probably gonna get more utility out of the crit because oh, the yeah. crit is instant like a deck the reason i think we keep coming back to spikes is because i think it emphasizes just the sheer benefit the crit gives mm -hmm. another thing is special like like it forced two made king of knights playable mm -hmm. like they made it a threat all the time yeah because the entire from the very beginning all, that's why people played monarch because monarch got a crit it's not just power mm -hmm. because that's it's i mean yes against protect you're still going to run into if they have the pg they have the pg but the thing is Guarding big numbers, at the end of the day, you'll just say it's just one damage. If they check the crit, they check the crit. But once you've got a full two to three of your front row units all with a crit, mm -hmm. and you're sitting there at three, four damage, and you just realize, I not only do I have to guard this all, I need to guard this all. You just lose. You will lose. Like, I, I, I find it hard to think of playing anything but OTT, uh, putting you in a scenario where, like, or maybe if you're going crazy with Excel drawing cards, like, you're gonna run out of hand really fast, like, um, and I'll go back to playing Braxton again. Like, I, when you've got the restanding Vanguard, especially, that I mean that drains you faster than anything. Uh, it's, mm, I don't. Have you played against Kagero a lot? Uh, yes, I played against the uh, <sighs> the uh, the fact that the Dote the restanding with a restanding with a crit is always a threat. So it's always a threat. Bad. And if you're at even if you're at three, you're still in death range. Yeah. And plus, like, I remember dropping Monarch on somebody in a tournament, um, getting the crit off, putting the putting Force 2 under the Vanguard, um, or having Force 2 under the Vanguard, swinging for three at his three, and then suddenly, like, he's dying from three damage. And dying from three damage is not a happy place to be. Nah. Um, so I, I give Force 2 for its potency, man. It's, it's, it's a lateral movement, but... It's a it's 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 not a backwards one. Not that I think the next one is a backwards movement per no. se, but it's a very different movement. And it, it also kind of re I mean, maybe it's because I'm playing against too much Kagero. Uh, you know, don't quote us on this because this is all you know, um, you know, from our experiences, circumstantial evidence that we have to go off of. But boy, I've had a bad time against Force Two, and it scares me just as much as I thought it did when they announced the skill. Plus, you just have to think about you. You have to think about. Like, e even if you take your mindset out of the restanding crit, 
We're, we talked about spikes a lot. Um, in the future, D police is topping right now overseas, mm-hmm. and I think a part of that has to be Force Two as well. Yeah, one because uh, whatever die. I mean, I think some of them are using Force One, but the, that deck is built for the versatility of Force. Yeah, you can make the decision depending on your opponent. Like, are they going to have the ability to guard my high powered lines? Maybe I'm better off just using the crit here and hoping that the that die liner is going to give me the power I need. Die liner is going to shake things up, man. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> and so. And the deck, like, it has a restander, a pseudo restander, but it has a restander in Great Dayusha. Mm-hmm. And so it has a lot of utility that it can pull from to win games. Um, Fish already makes pretty big lines because all those Great Threes can boost. Neo Nectar, same thing. Neo Nectar can already make big lines because it can do Superior things. Call, you get the, the Corolla Spinach lines ending up at 50 60, and you're staring that down as just as bad. Plus, the one thing you don't want to be staring down when you're staring on a tomato swing is a tomato swing with a crit on it. <laughs> <laughs> that is too many nutrients. Picture exploding tomato, but he's got a shank. <laughs> that's force two. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's kind of what our thoughts on that. And to say third protect two, it's not to say that it's the worst one. I think by no means can you call any of these gifts or any of these choices a bad choice. Uh, because like we said, it's it's definitely going to be an interesting spin and totally matchup dependent. Uh, because I think... Uh, there are a lot of arguments to be made to say that Force One, or uh, excuse me, Protect One, will probably be your go-to choice a lot of the time. But um, in Protect decks that you know you think might be doing well enough on their own, you might draw enough cards, you might feel okay, and just having that extra intercept power, making your lines a little bit beefier, that could be all you need. Um, I'm I'm excited to try it with Grand Blue. I've yet to do any actual testing. Once we get Kokitis and whatnot. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. No, that'll be. I think. I think protect two. I think protect two is another one of those situations where it's like a lot of. Excuse me. A lot of the older decks were never designed to have that just that innate little bit of power boost. Yeah. And so I think it's. I think it's nice. I think it helps them hit lines that they weren't designed to hit to begin DI with. Di also. Like Di you know? yeah. Di or 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 like even like we were just talking Grand Blue. I think Grand Blue was never really Grand Blue was a weird odd child, but they didn't know. They were like, oh, we'll give it protect, but it's mm-hmm. like. Eh, was this really the right decision? Was this the wrong? Do we really want another Force Clan in the game, yeah. like, or another Excel, whatever? So, um, really quick, another thing I just thought of randomly that's like really cheeky about Force Two hmm. is like, think about the new Shadow Paladin unit that's only five k, but if it doesn't hit, it, it, it you can see yeah. you want to deal the damage. Imagine, like, I don't think anyone would ever run something like that, but it's a really cheeky strategy because like you boost it for to hit right, yeah. and you swing. And then it's like, okay, you either guard this and you take one damage, or you don't guard this. It hits, and you take two damage. <laughs> There's no way out of that situation where you're not still taking a damage. So it's if it doesn't hit. If it, yeah, the skills if it doesn't hit. You get it's you five, take the damage. Because it's 5k. Yeah. So it's like, if it doesn't hit, you see me when you take a damage. If it does hit, and you put the force two marker underneath it, you take two damages. And then, then like, you put your opponent in a no-win situation. I hadn't thought about that, and you said no one will play that, but I, I would play it. <laughs> I mean, you've got the main, right? <laughs> you, you're basically playing 5k the deck. Not a bad thing, because <laughs> uh, clearly your grade ones are out here pinging damage. Uh, uh, whatever she does, drawing cards with Swordbreaker, like, you know, you've got a lot of... St- mm, shadows are weird, man. Shadows are a beast. <laughs> uh, but you back to Protect 2. Um, that I don't sounds know. dirty. <laughs> Uh, Protect 2 is a, is a weird beast. Uh, I think that while it wasn't designed to do what it does, I think it's a nice benefit to, like, Bugs and Grand Blue. And you can also tell that we don't play that. a lot of Protect 2 because there's not a lot to yeah. say. We don't have a lot to say when it comes to Protect 2. Speak one. I mean, we don't play against a lot of Protect recently, and then, like, also Protect 2 even less. Yeah. And even the Protect decks that we have played against tend to stick to Protect 1. I mean, I'm th- I have Angels, um, and I was thinking about, you know... What if you do your ride and you double Zeracule and then you're sitting with three Protect 2 markers on the board? Like, I mean, on paper, that sounds great. How often are you going to see it? Who knows? Uh, I'm sure some people are sacky and see stuff like that all the time and then you're sitting there with a giant Pegasus. God help you, a giant hospital. <laughs> oh, God. Because who needed a hospital with a Force marker on it? <laughs> Good God. <laughs> That's mighty big, boss. 
I'm Actually, gonna, I forget. If you have a grid three on protect two, can I intercept or or is that a no, 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 no? I didn't think so. No, God, uh, please no. I didn't think so. <laughs> that would have been that would have been what made protect two. It might have made that protect been two. Awesome. <laughs> that would have been awesome. Like in the unit on this circle gains intercept. I'd have been like, stop. Bermuda's like, you took our thing. <laughs> then it might have been like, this might be better than protect. I would say that it is now a lateral because I still kind of my heart of hearts. I think that protect two is a slightly lower step than protect like if these had been reversed we'd be very we'd, happy we'd be having a discussion of like man getting a, getting a pg is so awesome <laughs> like instead of this power and shield mm -hmm. it, but in sense of the way i feel like it's a it's a it's a different it's a lateral diagonal slight step yeah we would have been in a weird place if these gifts had been the other way around because this is definitely like i said it's very much Dude, reactive. Spice would have been the top deck forever. <laughs> forever in a day. Uh, and Kagura probably too. Yeah. <laughs> but then again, I think if they had put, if they had made Protect 2 have the intercept, like the, whatever units on the circle gains the intercept like ability, mm -hmm. then it would have been a much more lateral movement. Because like, plus 10k shield, and it gets the intercept, now grade 3s are like interceptors? Like, yeah. even Kagro can't retire things that fast. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. Uh, so yeah, we but we, um, you know, we definitely have a lot more testing to do. And uh, I think like I think I, I speak for most of us when I say it's been a lot of fun. It, it is a nice, nice mix-up for the game that we've, uh, we've all come to know. You know, we get our first set of support for all of these clans that we know and love. And now... Apart from our second uh, sets of support, we've got a whole new way to play every clan with all that different support. It's like it's like flipping, it's like flipping the game board over and playing like different versions of the same game. It's, yeah, no, it's it, really cool. It's absolutely, it's like playing Mario Party but on a new map. It's the same game but it's, <laughs> but it's new, different skin, <laughs> different skin. And it's just, it's it's a, it's a lot of fun because it, it they Bushiro just found a, a somewhat answer, or I guess a a way to slow. The effects of power creep mm -hmm. by introducing this like broad new mechanic that affects old decks and adds very much new like without having to release a single card for any of those old so they no longer have to like pump out so like granted i'm excited for the new support that spikes were gonna get but spikes were pretty good to begin with they just needed a little bit of oomph a new oomph to put them in the game and i think that does it or the same thing with like great nature i think great nature was a finely built fine-tuned machine yeah it just needed something different to help it like in in this new world of power yeah i think i think i i would group neons i would group spikes i would group great nature all into that because uh those are kind of all decks in my mind that only fell off because new decks came out and uh you know or or they became the deck to counter obviously uh hamsters won worlds uh neo nectars were really big i remember everybody was playing neos but i mean the second some new toy comes along, you just kind of stop playing it. But Force 2 kind of gives these another chance to, to shine. It's a new breath of life. Yeah. What do you think down there? Uh, let us know in your comments. What do you think? What, 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 what deck haven't we mentioned? I know we haven't mentioned Tachis, but I don't like Tachis. We're, we're obviously <laughs> partial to what we have and what we play the most. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, um, um, also, we don't know what the real new stuff. I mean, like, as far as, besides, like, Dote, like, Messiahs are a beast. And I don't know how, one, we don't, we never, the thing yeah. is, like, with every new deck, we'll never be able to fully understand where it was before the Switch and where it is at. We'll just understand them both at the same time. That's true. That's very Whereas, true. Whereas, like, all the old decks, I like prefer talking about them because we fully understood where they stood before Force 2 ever existed, and now we get this, this, this we understand their full new radical perspective. Yeah, there's a pretty stark contrast when you look at them. And, yeah. Uh, but let us yeah. know. What, what decks have, have, have we talked about? Um, but, yeah, let us know. Maybe there's one hidden down there that, uh, that you know. is like, nah, they're forgetting about the secret tech. Probably, uh, yeah. Uh, Aqua Force. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't think anything can help my voice. <laughs> that being said, make sure you drill that like while you're down there in the descriptions letting us know. <laughs> this is Team Absolution signing off. Peace.